So a couple days ago, we got 0.8 of an inch of rain. That was more than enough water to fill each one of these basins with some surplus going back to the street. So what we're looking at here is a whole series of stepped street side rain gardens or basins that are watered for free from the street runoff that we are redirecting into the street side basins. That way the street irrigates the street trees and other vegetation for free while reducing flooding downstream and in a way that grows over time, shade that will cool more of us and grow food for people, wildlife, livestock, and a whole heck of a lot more. So the whole thing flows in a good storm event and the water will hop over the curb and uh, flow on down the public right of way. It had previously eroded this into a gully and uh, neighbors had um, they would just fill it with dirt and then that dirt would just flow down and cause problems for the people downstream. So finally, we've got a really good solution here. We created a whole series of six street side eddy basins. The first thing here is there's a four inch diameter curb core, but you see this one, it got uh, plugged with some debris. So the key thing for the adjoining homeowner and neighbors is you gotta come out before the rain, during the rain, during the rainy season, um, and regularly check this and make sure you remove any clog so all can work well, okay? Super simple job, very rewarding. So what happens is in small flow events, uh, as is currently happening, the water will flow out of the uh, street gutter and into the street side basin. Ordinarily, with an eddy basin, um, once it fills up, it would back up the water to the inlet, and then the surplus would continue down the street gutter to the next basin. But here, because so much water in a big flow event will top the curb and flow along the right-of-way, um, we created a hybrid where it is an eddy basin, but in the big flow events, uh, water can overflow from this basin, which is lower than the overflow spillway. Um, it can fill that up. Once filled, it'll spill over to the next basin and go on down. Now, here with this curb core, it was not clogged. So the basin has filled. All that vegetation is loving it. We planted all this about six months ago. Here, the overflow water is going as planned to the next basin, filling that on up. And then it overflows to the next basin, fills that up, overflows to the next basin. So the sweet thing is um, we're getting infiltration within these basins, but we're also getting infiltration along the little channel between the basins. Yeah, a good bit of the water is flowing over, but a good bit of the water is also infiltrating. So really maximizing the water capture. And the key thing to make all this work, since we have water flowing over an earthen path, is it's hard to see here with the water. I'll come back later and get a shot when there's not water flowing and covering it. But this is a one rock dam. One rock meaning it's only one rock high, not more than one rock high, because you want the seed that we place between the rock to be able to germinate and its roots to anchor this rock further in place. Um, and there's no need to do more than one rock high. So let's continue along. So we've got the uh, water flowing here. Now here the um, the client had wanted the potential of maybe turning these into a driveway at some point. So uh, we didn't do a basin in this area. We did uh, put in another one rock dam. It's pretty subtle because a good bit of it is uh, buried. But by doing that, we're not getting the eroding gully action here that happened in the past because this is the grade control here. So we've got a whole series of stepped um, one rock uh, dams um, all along here, stabilizing um, this whole waterway. So we don't get down cutting and we don't get the, the gully action. All right, here we've got our final basin and uh, working great like all the others. And then at the very end, because um, you've got all these utility boxes, we didn't want the water to continue to flow there and erode um, that infrastructure. So what is placed here 
is a rock baffle. All right, so it's again only one rock high. The lowest point is here. The highest point is along the uh, sidewalk. This helps divert stormwater flow that used to go down here, create that erosive gully. Now it diverts more of that water back to the street so we don't have any erosion problems. And we planted all this with food, medicinal bearing, um, wildlife supporting uh, native vegetation. All right, because the native plants are the best adapted to our climate, soils, and wildlife. And uh, planted uh, one to two trees um, per basin. So this once bare, bleak solar oven like uh, a situation. It's beautiful today because we've got the overcast weather. Um, but when the sun's out, this street just absorbs that heat, radiates it out, and this spot cooks. Um, so we're going to grow wonderful canopy of shade all along here, shading both walkway and street, controlling flooding, reducing stormwater flooding by pulling more of the stormwater flow off the street where it's a nuisance and into the street side plantings where it's a great resource. So I had a couple conversations with the neighbors here. Hopefully they'll get on board and in one of our future neighborhood street side rain and food forest plantings, we'll uh, partake and we'll start creating water harvesting basins and curb cores on this side of the street as we have on this side of the street. And that's the model that's meant to entice more to do the same or even better. Please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. For more information, be sure to check out the new full color editions of my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond. And you can get them at deep discount direct from me at my website, harvestingrainwater.com.